think we're ready to get going now. So I apologize for the delay, but we can go ahead and get, get started uh, right now. And we're going to be doing a couple of things. Um, this session is going to be, you know, a workshop, but I'm going to do a quick presentation to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be building in the workshop. And then I'm going to be jumping right into the workshop. So um, go ahead and pull up the workshop here and go ahead and share my screen. All right, so um, the, the workshop is actually located um, in my GitHub, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, share a link to this. It's gonna be at github.com slash dabit3 slash photo, amplify photo sharing workshop. So let's go ahead and share the link to this. Okay, so there's the link. Um, and before we get into that, we're gonna be going through a quick overview of, uh, of Amplify. So I'll go ahead and start this presentation real quick. So thank you for coming uh, to this. And uh, this is gonna be about a 15 minute presentation and then we're gonna be diving into the actual workshop material. But before we get into that, I kind of wanted to give an overview of Amplify. So my name is Nader Dabit. I'm a senior developer advocate on the AWS mobile team. And I'm also a web and mobile engineer of about, uh, I guess, nine, nine years at this point. I've been with AWS for a little over two years. And this is gonna be an introduction to Amplify, which is gonna be what we're using to kind of build our workshop with. So I think it's good to kind of give an overview. So when we're running into some of the things that we're gonna be doing, you have a good understanding of, of what that is. So when people talk about Amplify, they hear two things, AWS Amplify, and then they also hear of the Amplify framework. And I think it's kind of confusing a little bit. So I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and break apart what these two things are. So the Amplify framework is kind of the open source part of this. It's also the tooling that kind of is the main part of Amplify. The things that Amplify enables are just existing AWS services. Amplify is kind of a framework that allows you to spin up these services and interact with them a lot easier than in the past with AWS. Essentially, uh, a lower barrier to entry or just an easier way to kind of work with AWS. And then um, AWS Amplify is kind of the comprehensive term for the framework as well as the hosting service. But the hosting service is only a small part of it. Most of actually what gets done in an Amplify project is via the CLI and the libraries, which are part of the OSS part. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So essentially you have these three main pieces. You have um, the Amplify CLI, you have the Amplify libraries, and you have the Amplify hosting service. The CLI allows you to spin up AWS services. The client library allows you to then interact with those services from a web or mobile app. And then the hosting service is kind of an AWS service in and of itself that allows you to deploy um, static or dynamic websites. And then the future SSR support as well for things like Next and Nux. So Amplify CLI is, um, you know, you typically use it for, for these four things, initializing a new Amplify project, which is a kind of um, boilerplate starter project for adding AWS services. Once you've initialized your, your, your project, you can then start adding AWS services via the CLI. You can also configure and update the existing AWS services so let's say you create a REST API or Lambda function, you can modify your code locally and then use the CLI to deploy that update. And then as of this week, you can also import existing AWS services. That's gonna be a launch that we have in a couple of days. And then also it does code generation. So for instance, GraphQL um, schema code introspection um, for generating local code based on your GraphQL schema. It also does things like boilerplate code generation for popular types of Lambda functions. So for instance, you might need a Lambda function that uh, interacts with something like S3 or Amazon Cognito. And you can use the um, boilerplate that we create to kind of allow you to do that. Um, the installation and configuration process, this is something we're gonna go over in the workshop. You can install the uh, NPM and, and also another launch that we actually have um, that's happening, or I would say like a launch slash release slash update improvement is uh, the ability to install using curl. And actually that installation is six times faster than the NPM installation. So I'm really excited about that. But anyway, um, today you would install it using NPM. NPM install 
uh, gives you the global, and then you run the amplify uh, keyword to kind of do different things via the CLI. Um, once you've configured the amplify CLI once, you can then start using it for multiple projects. You would initialize a new project by running uh, the init command. You would then update um, existing services using the update command. You would add new services using the add command, and then, then you deploy updates using the push command. We're going to be using pretty much all of these in our um, in our workshop. So what you end up with is um, this idea of a cloud formation stack, which is essentially infrastructure as code that gets modified by the CLI. You get the AWS services that are created for you. You also have a local um, file called aws-exports.js, a local configuration file. And uh, that file is kept up for you by the CLI. So as you make updates, you can um, maybe basically, you know, add something, update something, remove something without having to actually touch the configuration file. It kind of updates for you. Um, and then you also have an Amplify folder, which is going to be where you have any code that you modify for your backend. So for instance, um, Lambda function code, GraphQL schema, stuff like that. And then once you've used the CLI to deploy, to deploy your services, you'll use the client libraries to interact with them. And all, this, all the client libraries are, are essentially really um, easier ways to kind of interact with AWS services than were available in the past. So for instance, you might have used the AWS JavaScript SDK. The Amplify library is essentially like an abstraction on top of that that just makes that much easier and a lot more straightforward. And it's, it's also a lot of times easier to work with the CLI and the Amplify client together um, based on the configurations that are kind of created by the CLI. So the client libraries are platform specific libraries optimized for interacting with AWS services from web and mobile apps. So we have uh, client library support for iOS, Android, and JavaScript, as well as now Flutter. Um, <clears throat> the usage looks something like this. You install the client libraries. This is web. You then import some type of API from them. So for, in, for instance, in this example, you can import the storage API to interact with S3. And then you can then interact with the service using put, get, um, and thing, or list. So for instance, you want to create a new item in S3 storage.put. You want to get that item storage.get. You want to list everything in a bucket it will be storage.list. We also have framework, custom framework UI support for uh, Angular, Ionic, React, and React Native. So one of the things that we're going to be using in the workshop today is a with authenticator um, flow for authentication. And this is just a couple of lines of code that spins up an entire authentication flow using one of these uh, frameworks. And in our case, it would be React. But you can do other things with them as well. They're essentially just really um, solid abstractions for popular types of functionality. So in most apps, you typically need a sign in and sign up flow for authentication purposes. Um, if you know you need that, you can just use this component and it will spin that up for you, kind of saving you from repetitive code. And then let's say you want to ship to production and you need to kind of really modify that to, to suit your purposes uh, for your design, you might need to kind of do some customization. You can always then replace that with complete uh, custom uh, code that we also support. The Amplify UI libraries uh, are a separate installation. So it would look something like this for React. You would do npm install, then the uh, library itself for UI React, which would be at AWS Amplify slash UI React. And then you would import from that library. In this example, we're going to spin up an authentic authentication flow with just really <clears throat> one extra line of code, the import. Um, and then we're just going to wrap the default export with that with authentication, with, with authenticator utility. And then what you get is something like this. You get an entire authentication flow that is customizable to an extent. So you can do stuff like uh, change the theming, change the font size, change the form fields and stuff like that as well. So some of the categories that are um, you know, currently supported, we're not gonna go through all of them. We're gonna go through a couple real quick. API um, allows you to create REST APIs and GraphQL APIs. We're gonna be focusing on GraphQL. Uh, 
the REST API would look something like this, where you basically spin up the service. The CLI creates a combination of a Lambda function and an API endpoint using API gateway. And then it also allows you the option to configure that with authentication as well. So you can put an authenticated, an authenticated uh, mechan authentication mechanism in front of your API endpoint for managing things like public and private access, as well as passing in the user's identity into the function um, automatically. So if you need to do any authorization in the Lambda, the identity will be automatically um, sent from the front end application in the headers, processed via API gateway, and then passed into the function event. <clears throat> you can also do a full CRUD API with a DynamoDB as a database. Um, and some of the different um, you know, runtimes that we currently support for Amplify specifically are Node.js, Python, Go, .NET, or Java. So when you're setting up your REST API, you can kind of choose which um, runtime you'd like to work with. Everything that we're doing in this workshop is JavaScript. So, um, but if you're interested in Python, Go, or anything like that, you can also choose those. And um, the other category is GraphQL, and that's the one we're going to be working with today. And with GraphQL, we have a managed GraphQL service called AppSync, and this allows you to interact with pretty much any data source. So you can map directly to AWS data sources like DynamoDB or Serverless Aurora, but you can also map into a Lambda function as kind of the API gateway extension from AppSync to map to MongoDB or even Firebase or really any data source that you'd like to. So a lot of people are using AppSync as the API layer for their microservice architecture. Um, the CLI also has additional functionality that we kind of group into this idea of a tool chain. So I mentioned the GraphQL code generation. There's also something called GraphQL transform that we're gonna be using today that allows you to extend your GraphQL schema. So you can add different GraphQL uh, directives that we've created that allow you to add additional functionality. The two things that we're gonna be focusing on today are um, at connection, which allow you to model one to many, many to one relationships between your data types and then model which is a way to deploy an entire GraphQL API off of a single type, which we'll look at uh, now. So for instance, um, if you think of a typical GraphQL API, you have to have your data sources, you have to have your resolvers, and you have to have the operations that map to the data sources via the resolvers. So the at model data type will allow, or the at model directive will allow you to create a base type and then we'll create all of the CRUD operations. So create, read, update, delete, and list. We'll create all of those operations, all of the resolvers, and we'll create a DynamoDB table for your to-do type. So you get all of that just by using this uh, single directive. And then the other directive I wanna call out is the at connection directive. And this just allows you to easily create relationships between types. So for instance, you might have a to-do app that has comments or maybe a blog app with posts that have comments. Using the at connection, you can define that relationship and therefore you can uh, have additional data access patterns for querying to-dos with the comments associated, or you can just get comments by a to-do ID. Um, and then when you create a comment, you would just need to reference the ID of the to-do that it's referencing. Um, yes, someone Matt mentioned, uh, please take screenshots from the slides. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the slide deck uh, on Twitter afterwards or uh, if there's a better way to share it, I will, but I think Twitter is, is a good way. I'm gonna upload the slide deck to Dropbox and then share that right before I get off and I'll paste the link into the chat. So feel free to take all of this and use it as you'd like. Um, and that's it. I wanted to try to make this uh, as quick as possible because we have a lot of stuff to cover in the workshop. And let's go ahead and jump to the workshop. So I pasted a link to this workshop um, and I pasted it into the chat. And what this basically is, is it's an app that I think works really well when you're trying to, um, you know what, let me share also, um, I think I can share my video. I think she said that they fixed that. Okay, cool. So I'm sharing my video. So yeah, hello everyone. Um, <clears throat> basically, when you're building an app, there's a lot of things that are uh, common things that you end up needing. And I kind of built this workshop around what I think is a good introduction to kind of the general overview of all these things, how they work together. So you can then take those and build out different apps yourself 
maybe not this exact app, but using a lot of the common scenarios. So if you think of a lot of common apps today that are popular, um, I like to, to list out the more popular ones because they, they kind of follow this flow that we're going to be going today, going over today. Uh, one is like something like a Twitter like app, uh, maybe something like Instagram or something like a blog like Medium or Dev.2. <clears throat> you have this idea of authenticated and unauthenticated access. So that means if I am not signed into Twitter, I can go and I can view a feed of, of items probably. <clears throat> but if I am signed in, I can actually go and uh, interact with the posts that I've created. I can delete those, but no one else can delete those, right? Only, only I can delete the posts that I've made. Or I might be able to update a blog post that I've made. Um, and when you look at that app, like let's say, for instance, like Twitter, you have the ability to uh, authenticate. You have the ability to create posts and you have the ability to upload media. So grouping all of those together and how to make this all work, I think is a really solid use case. And that's what we're gonna be building today. We're gonna to be building like a really bare bones version of something like Instagram that I call Postagram. <clears throat> now, this is a self-paced workshop, meaning that I'm gonna be going through it at a pace that I feel is good for, um, for the average person but it might go faster or slower for you. So if you, if you feel like you're going faster, then go ahead and jump ahead. And then you can ask me questions either here or offline on Twitter. I'm gonna share my, my contact info there and I'll be available there. But um, at the end of this workshop, we're gonna be kind of putting all these pieces together to kind of add authentication, add data, um, add authorization around the data and also add media. Um, and this workshop isn't meant to clone. Like I have an example here of the finished app, but really uh, this is more of like a GitHub README that has evolved over the last few months because I've given a similar workshop to this. I've gotten pull requests, I've gotten issues, and this has allowed me to kind of um, evolve this workshop into something that's more useful based on actual feedback from uh, people that have taken it. Now I've added a couple of new sections for, for this event um, that we're gonna go over today. Um, that kind of go into a little bit more on the media storage side, because I think that was a little bit um, missing a little bit of depth there. But, uh, but in general, the way that this is going to work, it's going to walk through three main steps. The first step is kind of a general overview of how these different services work. So we're going to walk through adding an API. We're going to walk through adding authentication. We're going to add, walk through adding storage. But it's not all going to really fit together at first. Um, and then what we're going to do is now that we have an understanding of how to add these services and interact with them, we're going to start building something a little more sophisticated, the actual photo sharing app. <clears throat> That's kind of like step two. And then after we've built that app, I have kind of like an advanced section that goes into a little bit more uh, advanced stuff. So um, what we're going to do in that advanced section is going to be doing stuff like adding more author authorization and fine grain access control. Um, having multiple types of um, authorization access. So um, I think for this next hour, we're not going to get to the, that advanced part. I think what we're going to get to is really the beginning part, um, kind of going through each of these services. And I think that's going to set the foundation for you to continue um, to actually build out the rest of this on your own time. Because um, we do have such a short amount of time, um, I, I'm thinking what we're going to be able to basically get through is uh, about to right here where we're, we get to actually um, this part right here. But everything that we cover above this will lay the groundwork for you to understand, I think, what is actually happening um, for the next steps. So I hope, that's, I hope that makes sense for everybody. It seems to be uh, working out pretty good for the few times that I've done this similar approach. And um, basically, we're going to walk through starting here from the overview and everything in here should be copy and paste. So all of this code should work really great for you without having to kind of really worry about um, if you if you end up like wanting to type this yourself, which, you know, I recommend if you feel like you have the time um, and then you run into some error, just being able to copy and paste and then walk through it should work for you. So um, that's kind of what I like to have is like a no brainer approach where um, even if you kind of met, miss something, you can always go back and copy and paste and it should work. So um, if you look at the overview, it tells you what we're going to do. We're going to create a new React app from scratch. We're going to then install the dependencies locally. So NPM install. We're going to then initialize an Amplify app and we're going to start adding features. So I hope that um, sounds good for everybody. And um, this workshop is open source. So anybody that has any feedback, um, 
open an issue, I would love to help you answer your, uh, your feedback, either in the form of an answer Q&A type style or in the form of a pull request or emerge on my end, or like an update from me to make this a better workshop for, for, for future developers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and, and start right here, they're getting started and creating a new React app. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my screen and kind of bump it like this. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new React app using NPX. So we're gonna go ahead and start here, NPX create React app. And from here, we're gonna change into the directory and install the dependencies using either NPM or Yarn. And I might make my screen a little bit bigger or at least my text. Just wanna make sure everybody can see. Yes, yeah, so someone asked, uh, can I share the links because they started off late? Yes, absolutely. Let me go ahead and share this one more time. So some of the dependencies that we're going to be installing are AWS Amplify, which is the JavaScript library for Amplify, Emotion, which is what we're going to be using for styling, UUID is a library for creating unique identifiers, uh, React Router DOM is a library for doing client-side routing, and then at AWS-Amplify slash UI React is the UI component library for Amplify. So we're gonna install all of these next after we change into that new directory. So I should be able to go ahead and CV Postagram. And from here, I should be in a blank React app. And then I'll go ahead and just uh, do yarn add or NPM install. And I'm just gonna paste in all of these dependencies. So after that install, install is done, I'm gonna wait just a couple of seconds to make sure everyone is uh, caught up because I know my computer is not the same speed as everyone else's. And I'm gonna go ahead and maybe upload my slide deck on this other window over here to Dropbox and share it. So while that is uploading, I'm uploading on a different screen. Um, we've created our React app by running NPX. We've changed into the directory and we've installed the dependencies. Next is the Amplify related stuff. So um, we are going to install the global dependency of the Amplify CLI by running npm install dash g at aws dash amplify slash CLI. And I'm pasting a link to the slide deck.
Um, no, I probably wouldn't. I, I would probably recommend not using Docker. Yeah, just like you mentioned, I would recommend using just vanilla Linux. Should be good to go. Okay, so after you install the CLI, you should get something like this. Successfully install the Amplify CLI. And then you should be able to run just the Amplify command. And you might see this type of output here, which basically means the CLI has been installed and you're good to go. Um, what we're gonna be releasing uh, you know, this week actually, I think, or maybe early next week is a crawl command also. So if you, if you have any um, reason to not use NPM, a lot of mobile developers actually we've noticed um, are more interested in using curl. The curl version for some reason is like six times faster anyway. So I'm gonna start recommending that when that comes out, which is a really nice experience. So now that we've installed the CLI, we've tested it out. What we wanna do is configure the CLI with a user and you only have to do this once, like ever. So once you've done this, you can create multiple Amplify apps. You don't have to keep doing this every time. So this is like a one-time step, really. You just need to basically create a user locally that you're going to be using to create all of these different services. So for instance, if you log into your AWS account right now, when you create a new um, S3 bucket, it's essentially us being like, okay, let's take that user authentication mechanism and move it down locally. So we can then start doing that same thing from our CLI as opposed to doing it from the console. And to do that, we're gonna be running Amplify Configure. And this is gonna walk us through the steps necessary. Now, this is probably the most confusing part of this workshop if you've never uh, done this before. So therefore, um, I also have in the workshop a link to a video that allows you to kind of fast forward and walk through this process at your own pace. But uh, so I'll recommend if you get stuck here, checking out this video, it should be um, a lot more clear if, if you get lost at some point. But when we run Amplify Configure, you're gonna see that the terminal opens up the console of AWS automatically. It does this just to make sure that we're signed in because in the next step, we're gonna need to be signed in to create a user in the dashboard. This is kind of the one step where you actually need to interact with the AWS console because in the future, we're not gonna really be doing that. So after we've done that, we get to choose the region that we'd like to create uh, the user in. Um, can the Amplify, somebody asked a question, uh, can Amplify CLI use configured AWS profiles? Yes. So if you already have an AWS profile locally using the AWS SDK, you can actually skip this part. Um, good good uh, call out there. So. Um, what we're doing is basically creating a local user um, similar to the, the way the AWS CLI does. So anyway, back to these commands here. I'm gonna choose the region closest to me. So for me, I'm on the East Coast kinda, I'm in Mississippi, I'm gonna choose US East one. You can use um, the region that's closest to you. So any of these will work fine. I'll choose US East one. And then I'm gonna give the name for the IAM user. And this is going to be whatever you'd like it to be, really. But I have um, kind of in the workshop um, a name that I'm going to use called Amplify CLI User. And then what's going to happen now is the AWS console is going to open back again. And it's going to open up in this uh, walkthrough for creating a new IAM user, which is basically short for Identity Access Management. And you can just accept all of these defaults. Um, basically, it's going to give you the things that you, that you need necessary. And I'm going to actually change this user name here because I apparently have one already with the same name. So you give the user a name. You click Next. You click uh, Next in the permissions area. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're, we're saying we want to give admin uh, privilege to this user because Amplify CLI actually interacts with dozens of AWS services. So we want to make sure that this user is configured uh, to be able to do all of the things that, that need to be done. So we click next and then we don't need any tags. So you can just click next review. And then it's going to kind of give you an overview of the user that we're creating. So it gives you the name, it gives you the 
um, permissions, which for us, we're giving ad administrator access. And then it says no tags were added. Um, and then we can click create user. And someone asks, is the AWS Middle East region up? I believe, I believe they did launch that. I don't know if AWS Amplify yet uh, enables or can, it supports that region yet, but, uh, but I believe it did launch. And then we're usually a few months behind as far as those, those sorts of things are concerned. Uh, Amplify at least. Well, I think I maybe um, uploaded this slide deck to the wrong place. Let's see here. There we go, okay. So once you create the user, you should get an access key ID and a secret access key. The access key ID and the secret access key is what we're gonna need now on these next steps. So um, don't close this out just yet. Go ahead and copy to your clipboard the access key ID, and then you would jump back to your uh, command line to continue here. I can minimize this a little bit. So the access key ID, I can now just enter here. I'm gonna paste it here. If you're on Windows and you notice that uh, it doesn't show up like this, you may have to uh, manually type this in or, or go some other route. Uh, sometimes copy and paste works good on Bash on Windows. Sometimes I've noticed that people have issues with it. But either way, we need to basically give the access key ID and then the secret access key here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show this because I'm gonna delete this immediately after anyway, so no one should be able to hack me. Go ahead and paste that there. And now we've entered our uh, secret access key and our access key ID. And this is the last thing we need to do is just give this a user. So I usually copy the username that I've created in the um, AWS um, console. So I call this Amplify CLI user and I added dash test. Um, whatever you call yours, you might wanna just use the same user here. And then once you've done that, successfully, it will say successfully set up the new user. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open in a separate window my IAM dashboard and delete this user because I don't need this user. I was just kind of doing this for demonstration purposes. And I also exposed um, my credentials. So that, that way I can go ahead and delete this and, and continue on. All right, so now that I've created and configured the user, we're done with uh, this whole part here. The configuration process is complete, and now we can start using Amplify. So what we're gonna do is initialize a new project by running Amplify init. And this is gonna walk us through the project creation phase. So when you run Amplify Net, you are going to be doing so from within. Uh, and we have five minutes left before we're about to take a break, um, just FYI. So we'll get through this, this initial setup process, and then we'll be ready to actually start writing some code, which is a good breaking point anyway. So when we run Amplify Net, we're initializing a new Amplify project. And like I mentioned, this is typically done at the root of some um, client application. It can be a web app. It can be a mobile app, it can be a React Native app or Next app or whatever. But you run Amplify Init, and then this, this code um, that it, that's generated, it's uh, needed kind of as a dependency within that, that front end application. So we're doing that in this case in, front, uh, in our root of our Postagram React app. What we're gonna do is give the project a name. Uh, this can be whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call this Postagram. The name for the environment. So you have like a base environment that we're going to use. This this naming isn't that important now, but in the future, if you want to create um, some testing environment, for example, you could then create a new environment based on this environment name. So I'm just going to call the base environment name Dev. Um, you can choose your default text editor or none if it's not listed here. The reason that this is being asked is in the future, as we're um, iterating on our back end. We will sometimes need to edit code in, in some CLI process. And the, the terminal will automatically open up the code that needs to be edited for you by choosing this default editor. Um, 
So it's pretty nice to have, but you can always just go in and kind of locate that code yourself and modify it when necessary. So it's not, it's not necessary. It's just a nice extra to have. So I'm going to choose VS code because that's what I'm using. The next thing we're going to um, choose is the type of app that we're building. For us, it's going to be JavaScript. And you're going to notice that at this point, after answering this question, that the CLI is going to recognize that we're in a React application. And it's going to actually auto detect all of these answers for us from now on. So it knows we're in our JavaScript app. It knows we're in a React app. It understands our source directory as SRC. It understands our distribution directory path is build and our build command is build and our start command is start. So it kind of auto detects that. So you can pretty much take all of the defaults after choosing Visual Studio Code just by pressing enter. And then the last thing we're gonna do is choose our AWS profile. So we just created a new profile a second ago. For you, you should see um, a profile, something like this, whatever you just created. For me, I just created Amplify CLI user test. So I could choose that profile, but I just deleted that user in my account. So I'm gonna use default. But you can choose whatever um, profile you just, you just created a second ago. And um, that is it. At this point, the CLI is gonna go ahead and deploy the Amplify project. So if we go back to the GitHub readme here, um, you're gonna kind of see that the Amplify CLI has initialized a new project and you will see a new folder, Amplify, and a new file called aws-exports.js. So these are like two artifacts from the CLI successfully deploying um, our backend um, infrastructure. And we can then start interacting with our project in two different ways. We can look at the local configuration, kind of seeing what's happening at any time by running Amplify status. This is kind of a local CLI command that's gonna kind of give us an overview of what's going on in our app. And then we have the Amplify console command that will actually open up the, the new Amplify project that we just created in our AWS um, console. So let's try that out and then we'll take a break. So if I go here into my uh, terminal, I'll run Amplify console. We're just gonna see that it opens up this new um, Amplify project here. And there's not a lot going on yet because we haven't really added anything, but it gives you a nice overview in the future as we start adding functionality for you to do things like uh, logging for your functions, links to your S3 bucket, links to your API and data sources that's associated with that API. So um, we are going to be uh, taking a break now and I believe the break is over at uh, 12 o'clock Pacific time, three o'clock Eastern time. Right now it is um, 11.45 a.m. Eastern time. So we're gonna be, I'm sorry, it's 11.45 a.m. Pacific time. So we're gonna be starting back in 15 minutes essentially. So um, I'm gonna answer some questions uh, during the break and uh, I'll see you back here in 15 minutes. All right, so I think we are gonna go ahead and um, jump back into the workshop. So I hope everyone had uh, time to rest up and is ready to, to keep going. So I'll go ahead and open up the chat so I can make sure I can see everything going on. And um, I know a couple of people had questions um, during the Amplify init process after running Amplify configure. The errors were around the AWS access key ID needs a subscription for the service. Um, so that basically means like, you, you know, we created the IAM user and the um, AWS console. And um, essentially we were like in this area right here that I'm kind of going to navigate to. And we created a user. And during this setup process, you know, we, um, we kind of, we gave the user a certain set of permissions. And once you give, um, you know, the user permissions, we go and um, we kind of create uh, this user. And what you end up with is this access key ID, right? So the access key ID is being referenced in this area. It's basically saying the access key ID needs a subscription for the service. Um, so usually that means one of two things. Well, well sometimes another thing. It can, be, it can be one thing that you are using, maybe maybe you're signed into 
um, a an account that is like in a, a work account maybe, and the work account might have some scope down privileges that are not enabled for admin. That's one that's one uh, possibility. The other possibility is if like you're a brand new AWS user and you've signed up for your account, um, a lot of times you need to confirm that your account has been set up. And I know that that is not the case for, for the people I don't think in this chat because they say they've already used their account before, but that could be a possibility. Uh, and, the, and the last possibility is that you chose some other permission role other than admin. Um, if that's the case, then I would I would kind of go back and make sure that that was configured properly. So um, yeah, but let's go ahead and 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 now move on to the next steps. So um, we've basically created the Amplify project. So now we want to start adding services and interacting with them from our React app. So what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, an API. We're also going to um, enable authentication in just a moment. And then we're going to add storage and we're going to also interact with each of those services. So to get started, we're going to create the GraphQL API for uh, interacting with posts. And the post is basically going to be kind of the app that we're building. Uh, I mentioned it was called Postagram. Basically, we're going to be able to create uh, a new post that has an image associated with it. And then the main view of the app is going to have a list of all of the posts. And then we're going to be able to click on an individual post and drill down into the post um, detail, so like a detail view. So the post is going to have a name, a location, a description, and an image. So you might think of an Instagram post that has a, an image, a, um, a location, a geolocation, and maybe like some description. So that's kind of going to be what we're doing here. Um, we don't really need the name field, you know, right, if we're trying to recreate Instagram. It's just a, another way to demonstrate metadata on the post, though, so we're going to stick with that. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to walk through these steps. So amplify add API, and I'll try to maybe um, show both of these screens at once, if possible. And then we're going to kind of answer these questions in this uh, in this order. So we're going to choose GraphQL as the type of uh, API. We're going to give the uh, API name, you can give this whatever your name you'd like. I'm just going to call this uh, Postagram to kind of go along with the name of our app. You can then choose a default authorization type. For now, it's going to be a public authorization, meaning anyone interacting with this API can do so as long as they pass in the API key. And uh, in the advanced section, after we go a little further on, we're going to upload, upload I'm sorry, update this to kind of have multiple authorization types. So we're gonna have a combination of public and private access, which I think is very important for most modern applications. But to start off, we're just gonna use public access, which is API key. We can now optionally enter a description for the API key. So this can be whatever you'd like. I'll call it public. Next, we can choose an expiration date. Um, and then as you um, modify and update your API, you can continue to extend this expiration um, date um, or, or you can set a new expiration date. But for now, we'll just set it to be like maybe one year from now. Next, we can configure advanced settings if we would like to, but we don't. But let's say that we wanted to um, do anything else related to this API. Some of that stuff might be um, adding a, um, a secondary authorization mode, which we're going to do later. Another thing might be configuring conflict detection, which we're not covering today. But uh, AppSync and Amplify enable offline uh, um, you know, interactions as well. So let's say you wanted to build an offline app. You could actually do that by interacting with um, the or, or extending the existing settings by going into the advanced settings. But we're not going to do that now. We're kind of starting off pretty basic. So we'll just say no. And then if we have a, an ex existing GraphQL schema that we'd like to use for our app, we can choose that here. But we do not. So I'm going to choose no. And then finally, we're going to choose the schema template. And this is basically just boilerplate. So it's just going to kind of give us a GraphQL schema to start with. And we can start with a single object with fields, which is just a to-do app, or a one-to-many relationship, which is kind of like a blogging app. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be overriding, uh, overwriting this entire schema anyway. So I'll just choose uh, the single object with fields. So this is going to go ahead and generate your schema locally to start off with. And then we have the option to uh, edit the schema. So it's basically saying, 
do you want to edit the schema now? I'm going to choose yes. And this should now open up the schema in your uh, text editor. Whoops. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the entire project in my text editor. But it should have opened up, if you have chosen your text editor, the, um, the schema located in um, the Amplify folder. So we'll go ahead and navigate to that. So it'll be an Amplify slash backend slash API slash schema. So the schema that's created by the CLI is this. Um, yes, so uh, someone asked to link to the documentation. I'll go ahead and link to that here. That's the docs, and again, I'll, I'll paste in the workshop link one more time, just in case. Um, so the schema that we're working with is this one right here, and um, I pasted a uh, like a or I put the file path here just to be sure if anyone was interested. Amplify slash backend slash API, and then this is kind of the full path here. This is the type that we're going to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. The post is going to have a required ID, required name, required location, and required description, and an optional image. Because at first, we're going to be creating um, updates without an image. And then later on, when we um, can continue to iterate on our, on our app, we're going to add an image. But starting off, we just want to have a pretty base, basic um, example run. So after we create that post, um, and save our schema. We can now go ahead and deploy this. So we're going to run Amplify Push. And someone asks if the session video will be uploaded uh, afterwards. I can check on that. And I believe if you are an attendee here, which you obviously are, then yes, it you will be able to have access to this. But I will make sure that that's the case and get back with you soon. So to deploy, we're going to run Amplify Push. And this is going to um, ask us if we'd like to go ahead and continue because it's kind of giving us an overview of what's about to happen. It's going to go ahead and create the API with the name of Postgram. So yes, I want to go ahead and continue. And it's going to now give us a couple of options as well. Um, I kind of walked, I kind of uh, skipped that. So let me, let me try that again. Oops. I'm jumping around here. Let's go back to where we left off. Okay, right here. So I'm going to run Amplify Push. I'm going to say yes to continue. And it's going to now ask me, do you want to generate code for your GraphQL API? And I'm going to choose yes, because this is kind of the CLI doing the GraphQL code generation. It's going to introspect our GraphQL schema. I mean, it's going to like walk through it. And then it's going to create the local code that we're going to need to interact with it. So I'm going to choose JavaScript as the language target. I'm going to keep all of the defaults, really. So source slash GraphQL, generate all possible operations. And I will choose the default statement depth of two. So this is going to go ahead and uh, deploy the GraphQL API. And this is going to basically create, you know, a uh, an AppSync API. And AppSync again is kind of AWS's managed GraphQL service. So once this is deployed, we can actually go into the Amplify console here and test it out. So that we will run Amplify console API, but we have to wait for uh, this to deploy. So to give a quick overview, of what what's actually being deployed. If we go back to our uh, schema, we notice that we have this at model directive. And that means that we're getting the GraphQL schema, the GraphQL um, resolvers, and the database, which in this case, since we use the at model directive, is going to be just the DynamoDB table. And it's going to be all configured correctly uh, you know, to work together. So we're basically generating the API itself as well as the database. So this takes. You know, usually about uh, one minute or so. And then after we've created that, uh, after we've deployed it, we can start interacting with it either 
from our local um, you know, React app, or we can go directly into the AWS console and go into um, API here, which will then show a link to the AppSync API. And from the API dashboard, we can start basically testing it out. So we can run uh, queries, mutations, and uh, subscriptions directly from the API. So if you've ever worked with a REST API, you've probably been familiar with HTTP verbs like get, put, post, or, de or delete. So we might call um, something like fetch or use something like fetch, fetch or Axios. Um, and we might specify, you know, which HTTP uh, verb we're going to be interact, you know, using to interact with that REST API. Well, with AppSync, we typically actually have um, a little bit different way of, um, uh, with GraphQL, you basically have a, a, a typically different way to interact with your, your API, but the operations map very similarly to these REST, REST verbs. So for a GET operation in REST, you will have a query in GraphQL. For an post, put, patch, or delete in REST, you're going to be using a mutation. So you have queries for fetching data, mutations for you know um, uploading or, or, or updating or creating or deleting. Any any type of changes are going to happen with a mutation. So queries for for retrieving data, mutations for updating, um, and then you have the last operation, which is a subscription. And, and GraphQL, a subscription is the GraphQL spec specification for listening to updates in real time. So in this app, we're going to be implementing queries, mutations, and subscriptions, right? Um, but what we're going to be doing now is only going to be testing out the queries um, right here and the mutations here. So once the um, once this is done deploying, we're going to be able to go ahead and, and, and go directly into the console and, and and use that. So we'll wait a couple more seconds, and once this is deployed, we'll do that. So once your API has been successfully created, you'll get to output like this. Basically um, saying that the operations were successfully created locally at source slash GraphQL and the resources were updated in your, in your account. So we can run, um, you know, we can either look in the console now and we should see that under API, we have a link to the actual AppSync API here. Or if we'd like to, we can also just go there directly by running Amplify Console API. And from here, we can start interacting with our, um, our API. So in this uh, section here, this is kind of our Explorer. I'm sorry, this is the uh, graphical editor. Um, you can also open the Explorer to auto auto populate the graphical editor. But I've actually um, already listed out the copy and paste commands that you'll be using here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new post using this mutation here. And then we're going to query for the post using uh, this query here. So we can copy this. And we can go over here paste it in. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of posts. And 
and I will go ahead and create two, two posts. And if the posts are successfully created, then you should kind of see this output here. And all this output really is, is the return values from here. So if you, it only returned the name, only the name would have shown up. Um, anyway, the next thing we'll do is we'll query for the data. So we should, running list posts, see how many create posts mutations have been created in our database. So if I go over here to list posts, I should see two items come back. Um, let's see here. There we go. So you can see that we have an ID, a name, a location, and a description. And then with GraphQL, you can actually just ask for the data that you'd like to return and leave out everything else. So maybe I only want like the name and the location for a different view, or maybe I only want the name and the description. You can uh, just ask for whatever you, uh, whatever data you'd like, and you can get that back. But basically, this is just to kind of um, demonstrate that you can interact and test out your API in the dashboard here, and um, from there we can now query it from our graph from our React app. And that's kind of where we're at next. So um, now that we know the API works, we're able to list posts. We want to fetch the list of posts from our React app. So we're going to go down here to configuring the React application. And we're going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is open up my text editor over here on the left-hand panel. And we're going to open up two files. The first is src slash index.js as specified here. And the other is an src slash app.js is specified here. So we'll open up those two files and we'll be able to, to, to continue on. So um, when you're working with Amplify in any environment, whether it's a web app or a mobile app or any type of client application, you essentially need to let the app know about your AWS resources in some way. And I mentioned the AWS exports file that's created by the CLI and the initial slides. Well, this is that file here. And all we need to do is basically, you know, import that somewhere in our, in our um, web app to, you know, recognize that those resources are, th are there. We don't really need to ever edit this, but you'll see that we have the app sync endpoint, which is like the URI, URI for the uh, API. You have the authentication type, the, uh, the API key and things like that. So what we're going to do is we can just copy these three lines of code and drop them anywhere in index.js. And what we're doing is we're importing the Amplify library from AWS Amplify. We're importing that configuration file that was created for you by the CLI. And then we're calling amplify.configure passing in the config. And this is all we need to do to kind of uh, configure the React app to recognize our resources. And therefore, we can start making API calls against all of these resources. So once that's saved, you're, you're really ready to go um, as far as using the services uh, in your client app. The next thing we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and take a quick look at how the, the um, interactions look when you're working with the um, GraphQL API. So if you've ever used anything like Axios or Fetch, you've done something like a const data is equal to await fetch and then you pass in your URL, right? Um, or maybe uh, the same with Axios, and then you have like a JSON response or whatever. Well, the, the API.GraphQL client from Amplify is a very similar interface. We basically are gonna be returning a, a promise from API.GraphQL. And uh, when you pass in the uh, query or the variables, that kind of specifies which operation you're gonna be working with. So in this example, we're basically gonna say, we want to call API.GraphQL and the query that we want to query for is the, the list post query. And that is the same query that we just ran here. So we're going to be getting a piece of data that looks like this back, where we're going to have a data object with a list post property and an items array. Um, and the reason that we have the items array is because you can also ask for a next token, which is uh, something we're not going to be doing just now. But let's say you had uh, the need for pagination you can ask for the next token and then pass that in um, as an argument here by saying, okay, the next token is like some token. And this would give you the next uh, selection set after that initial query. But all we wanna do is just use uh, this right here. And this is gonna return um, some data. 
And then we're going to be able to update our local React state to kind of show that data. So um, the thing that we're just going to be able to do is really just copy and paste this entire code block here and paste it into src slash app.js. And I'll walk through kind of what's going on. So we import the use state and use effect hooks from React. Use state allows us to manage local state. Use effect um, is basically a way to make an, um, some type of asynchronous or any type of really um, operation or API call when the component loads. So use effect is going to fire when this component is, is rendered. Um, we import the API category from AWS Amplify, and this is the uh, way to make either REST or GraphQL API calls against um, an API in, in AWS. And then we import the list post query that was automatically generated by the CLI. So if we go to our file folder here, you'll see that we have a folder called GraphQL, and here we have our mutations, our queries, and our subscriptions. And this was automatically generated for us by the CLI. So we're just utilizing the query of, um, of list posts. So now that we have um, imported this query, we can use it. So we're gonna create a function called fetch posts and fetch posts is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna say, we're gonna call api.graphql passing in the query and we're gonna get a data a piece of data called that we're going to be calling post data. And then what we want to get is if, again, we look at this data structure here, we have data.listpost.items. This is the array that we're interested in. We just want the array of posts. So we're going to call um, set posts and it's going to go ahead and update the local state with the items returned from this query. So this is just going to be our list of posts. And the way that we set that is using that use state hook using uh, React, I'm sorry, use state from React. So the post array is going to be an empty array when the app loads. So we're setting an empty array. When the app loads, we call fetch posts. The fetch post function is going to update that list of posts with the new, new array and then re-render this um, block right here. And so when the app loads, there will be an empty uh, map so nothing is going to be rendered because there's going to be an empty array. And then after the set post function calls uh, or fires, we're going to then re-render and we're going to have those posts there. And we're just basically going to return the post name and the post location. So what we can do now is uh, run npm start. And this is going to go ahead and uh, open our app at localhost 3000. Now, and someone asked a question and I'll go ahead and answer that. How does Apollo fit in? Apollo is uh, two things. It's a client, um, you know, a, a GraphQL client, and then it's a server. And you can use one or the other or both together. So you can use the Apollo server to create your own server. Uh, you can use the Apollo client to interact with that server. Um, or you can use some other backend like AppSync and use the Apollo client to interact with your server. Um, or vice versa, you might use the Apollo server and then some other GraphQL client. Well, um, basically what AppSync is, is in a, it's kind of a replacement for an Apollo server because when you're dealing with the GraphQL server, you typically have to deal with things like security, authentication, authorization, scalability, things like uh, managing your infrastructure, making sure there's no downtime and all that stuff. And AppSync is essentially just a managed service to replace the back end part. On the front end part, you can still use the Apollo client to fetch data from, from AppSync if you would like. You could also use Urkel. You can use the Apollo client. You can use what we've used here, which is the API category. It doesn't matter. So it's up to you if you would like to, to kind of swap out that. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, you can, you, you can swap the Apollo client out if, if that's what you'd like. But I think the reason that um, we typically recommend using um, the, the Amplify library is because we have things that are built in for um, specifics for AppSync. For instance, if you're making an authenticated request using the um, Amplify libraries, we will automatically pass in the identity token. And uh, we will also, if they're assigned in using Amplify, we will keep up with the refresh token 
in the access token and all that stuff for you. And then in the AppSync resolver, we will automatically then have the identity of the caller there for you to do any authorization that you'd like to do. So um, for instance, you might want to find out if the user that made the API call is part of a certain group and then grant or deny them access to some piece of data. You could do that uh, and it kind of works automatically. But, um, but yeah, you can, but you can really use either one. So now when our app loads, we should see that we have um, the two posts, my second post and my first post rendered along with like a hello world greeting. So um, that's kind of the same thing that um, you see here. So we call list post, we kind of saw that there. Oops, uh, it looks like I have uh, something that I need to, re to remove. Oh yeah, here. Um, okay, so um, that's the, the data fetching. That's, that's what we're gonna be using in, in the photo sharing app once we get to that point. But we still have to add a couple of other things. Uh, we need to add authentication and we need to add uh, image storage, file storage. So let's go ahead and try to knock out authentication because we're kind of getting close to being there on time. Um, oh, it looks like I'm in the wrong directory there. What I'd like to do is run amplify add auth and we're gonna go ahead and add authentication. And for the configuration, we're gonna just choose the default configuration which is basically kind of like a set of smart defaults that you know work for, for a lot of the circumstances. You could also do, and this is gonna only enable like username and password, sign in and sign up. You can also do a combination of username, password, along with social providers like, like Facebook, uh, Google, uh, whatever other face, uh, social provider that you'd like to use. Um, and then you can do a manual configuration, which basically basically walks through every single step and kind of allows you to completely customize it. But we're gonna use default for this because it makes a lot of sense, uh, this being a workshop. Um, what we would wanna now do is select the mechanism for the users to sign in. Uh, yes, Apple ID is supported, um, absolutely. Um, you can use either a username, email, or phone number. Um, I'm gonna choose username. And you can also um, configure those advanced settings again after you've set that stuff up, but I don't want to do that. So uh, the two most popular ways that people, you know, are allowing users to sign in usually are either username or email. And both of those are really easy to kind of set up here, but we're just using username for this example. So after we've done that, we can run amplify status. We should see now that we have uh, two resources, one for authentication and one for API. The, um, the API has already been deployed and the auth category is set to create. So to deploy that, we'll just run Amplify Push. And the only update that's gonna happen is us creating this auth class. Nothing is gonna change for our API as, as kind of outlined here. So that's going to go ahead and deploy the authentication service. For us on the front end, uh, we want to now integrate our app with that, um, that service. So what we're going to basically need to do is create a way for users to sign up, sign in, uh, confirm sign in for MFA, and also maybe reset their password, all that stuff. So what we're going to use is this, this new component um, that's part of the Amplify UI React called with Authenticator. And this allows you to kind of put an authentication flow in, in front of any component. So I'm going to go back to app.js and I'm gonna minimize some of my code here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these uh, comments and uh, minimize this, this app block here. And I'm gonna go ahead and import this new component called with authenticator. So we have the with authenticator now. And what I'd like to do is instead of exporting the function app as the default export, I would like to instead create a new default export. So I'm going to kind of remove those first two statements there and I'll say export default with authenticator and pass in the app component. And I will save that. And if I go back to my app and I'll refresh, I see that now we have um, a sign-in flow put in front of our app. 
So now that that's done, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, see if our authentication service has been deployed because uh, once the authentication service is deployed, we can use that. So we'll wait a second for this to finish uh, deploying. Do you, manage, do you need to manage the authentication state locally? Uh, no, the, the Amplify libraries will do that for you. So um, once, you, once you've signed in, we will persist the user session. We will continue managing the, um, the access token and the ID token. Um, and we will use, we'll do so using a refresh token. That is all configured for you. So you don't ever have to worry about that uh, expiring or anything like that. Um, you can customize the token expirations though as well. So if you want to have a, uh, a shorter expiration or a longer expiration, you can customize all of that stuff. But we have kind of like defaults that we that we go by that work pretty well for most apps. So um, once this has been deployed, you should see something like this. And then, then we can go ahead and uh, sign in or sign up. So I don't have, I haven't signed up yet. So I'll go ahead and uh, sign up. I we can create an account. So I'll go ahead and um, use my phone number there. And this should send an MFA code to my email. So go ahead and check my email. Check it in my web browser because my phone is having a hard time connecting. So the verification code comes in to your email and you should be able to just like paste it in or put it in however. And then once you confirm, then the user is now signed in. And um, if we refresh, we see that we're, we stay signed in. But you might wonder, okay, so like we have no visual understanding of, of that user being signed in. So let's kind of now look at how we can access the user session. Um, the way that we can do that is uh, using the um, auth.current authenticated user function that we're going to use down there. But before we get to that, let's actually go back up here and go to adding a sign out button, which is kind of right below the NPM start where we, we tested it out here. So we're just going to go right below that. We're going to kind of skip over this part because uh, you know we don't really have to visually see that just right now. So it's not too important. I think what's more important is understanding that now that the user is signed in, like how can we um, access that user metadata? Um, oh, okay, so yeah, someone's asking about if I'd like to, to manage the user state with Redux and navigation, which variables would you use? Yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, first, let's go ahead and first show a sign out button so we can kind of for sure show that the user is signed in and allow them to sign out. And you can do that. You can create your own custom sign out button and you could do something like uh, import the auth class from, from Amplify and call auth.signout. And that's fairly easy to do, but you can also just make us a one-liner by importing this Amplify sign out button. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we're gonna drop this somewhere in here like this. And then, and then now when I refresh, I should see like there's a sign out button that matches kind of uh, the same flow that we had earlier. So when I refresh, I, I see that. And if I sign out, then I don't see anything. So we are indeed like, you know, working with an authenticated user. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign back in. Then. So we're signed in. Um, we, we use the sign out button to kind of show a sign out button. Let's now update the styling a little bit to kind of make this match the blue color theme that we kind of want to go with for this app. And to do that, you can completely customize this with, with, this, with Authenticator and these UI components using CSS. So you can um, do all kinds of stuff with CSS around kind of the, uh, the display and, and things like that. But you can also 
update the fields themselves and which fields you would like to show or hide. So for instance, you might not need to capture the user's phone number. You can hide that. You can do all kinds of stuff. But in this example, we're going to make it pretty basic. And we just want to change the uh, color scheme from this yellow to kind of like a blue color scheme. So I'm going to go to source slash index.css. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this here. And then um, when I save the file, I should see that we have now a blue, a blue uh, configuration. So I like the blue a little better. I'm going to keep it like that. And we want to now access the user's metadata. So we want to get stuff like their, um, their attributes. So we can, you know, like someone mentioned earlier, deal with that in local state. So uh, what we can do is we can go back to app.js and in our use effect hook, we're going to create a new function called check user, or we're going to invoke a new function called check user. And check user is going to be calling um, this method here. We're going to be calling auth authenticated user. And this gives us um, the user object, which kind of has all of the information you would need for that user. So it has their, their ID token, their access token, and their, you know, um, all of the stuff that has to do with their, their token for, for the use and any headers that you'd like to send to another API. It has their username, it has their attributes, it has all kinds of stuff. So let's actually go ahead and, and, lo and look at that. Um, oh yeah, first of all, we also need to import auth from AWS Amplify, which is something I forgot to do here. So import auth, create the new check user function, and then, um, you know, and then invoke that function here. So if I go back here, I should be able to inspect and see that we have the user with all of this metadata here. And we also have the user attributes, which contain the email, the phone number, the sub, which is their unique ID. So this is a completely globally unique ID that will never be replicated. So if you're looking for a unique identifier, that's kind of where I'd go. It's the sub short for subject, which is kind of an OID spe OIDC specific um, name. Um, Someone mentioned like, how do you use that user's name in your app? So let's say you want to create a very basic use case is like a profile. So you might do something like this. I want to create a user profile here. So I might say user and set user. And the, the default is set to like null. But um, in this check user function, you can now just call set user, user dot attributes. Or you might just pass in the whole user just passing the whole user. And then in our app, what we might do, and this is what we're doing in our workshop, actually. You might have like a heading that, uh, that is below here, maybe. It says hello, and then user.username. And then when the app uh, reloads, uh, you might want to actually do some conditional logic here. That way we make sure the user is, is there. So we're gonna say if there's a user, yeah, we're almost done now on time. So I see that. <laughs> but anyway, so um, we're saying hello, Dabit3, because they know I'm signing in as Dabit3. And this would be dynamic for any person that signs in. It's a super simple way to create a profile uh, just by using really the username as well as the attributes here. So um, we've done that. The last thing we wanna do is, um, upload images. So I don't think we're going to have time for this because we only have three minutes left, unfortunately, but this is kind of the last part of the workshop. So, um, um, you know, it was one of the core pieces, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If you've gotten this far, I think you'll, you'll be able to, to kind of manage this part pretty easily. But um, this section, what we're doing is we're adding storage, which is kind of like the new category we haven't done yet. And this is, this is using Amazon S3, which is a way to kind of upload images, videos, files, PDFs, whatever you'd like. But for our example, we're going to be using it for, for images. Um, and you would you know, run this command, walk through these steps. And to implement this uh, in the actual UI, you would use uh, this, this code block here, all this code here, and just replace whatever is in app.js. So if you want to try that out, uh, I encourage that. And then the last thing uh, that you would want to do, um, what, we, what we've done in this workshop is kind of go through all of the pieces necessary to build this app. 
And then starting here, you can basically just like create these components here and then copy and paste really all this code that's below there to actually build out the app using these components. And this will deepen your understanding of kind of how all these things work together. Because right now we've been using them separately, like authentication separately from the API, separately from the storage. Putting them all together kind of give you a better understanding of kind of how it all works together. So um, I appreciate all the great questions. And uh, I think that we've, for an hour and 30 minutes, really is all we've had together. I feel like we've covered a very solid amount of information. So um, I just you know appreciate everyone that's kind of taken part of this workshop. And I wanna just call out Oops, that you can um, also interact with me on Twitter if I, if we, we finish this and you end up running into any questions, um, twitter.com slash davit3, you can follow me there. I'd be happy to, um, to answer any questions. So yeah, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and, um, and, and call it quits. So I appreciate everyone's time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. And it was really fun being here and I, I really appreciate, I have the honor to, to be like speaking here in front of all these other amazing people and to be teaching you today. So uh, thanks for that. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, step away now. So uh, have a great rest of your day.